Hey guys, Dragon here from MuseShop.net and today we're talking about the Find Portfolio Muse widget which lets you create these awesome uh, portfolio thumbnails for your Muse website. As you can see, they are responsive width and height which is great for keeping your aspect ratio of your thumbnails which couldn't be done in Muse regularly. We'll be creating uh, this awesome fine gliding 3D hover effect and we'll be adding a heading over here and a paragraph over here. So let's go to Muse and see how the widget works. The fine portfolio widget is combined from two components. We have the engine component which lets us style the responsive options and the styling of all the thumbnails. And then we have the fine portfolio block which generates information for each of the portfolio thumbnails. And you need to have as many of these for as many thumbnails you create in your Muse project. So let's open the widget options. Uh, we have the responsive options and styling options, which we need to set only once and it will work for all of our thumbnails. So in the responsive options, you can adjust the number of the breakpoints to your site. You can have up to six breakpoints and how it works is over here I have a 1920 breakpoint as my starting breakpoint and then as we move to the and then we have an additional four smaller breakpoints and if I click here as you see you don't need to enter your first one you only need to tell the widget uh, when the smaller ones start to appear and the best thing to do is to adjust the numbers over here to match your own breakpoints. They're already set up to match the default Muse Shop Muse file. And you can have, let's say, six. As you can see, when I've selected six, now uh, the options for five and six have became available. But I'm gonna keep it at four for this tutorial. And it's already matched to my project, so I'm good. And then we have the text sizes and this means you can adjust the size of your headings and paragraph texts on your portfolio thumbnails for different responsive widths. And first we have the default heading text size and the default paragraph text size and default means for our starting breakpoint. And then we have breakpoint 1, breakpoint 2 and so on. So you can manually adjust any breakpoint you want over here and then set the text sizes over here. Now let's head to the styling options. Here we have the three sections, the fonts, the text colors and the hover effect colors. The cool thing about the fonts is that we've left you with the option to choose any Google font you want and to integrate it with our widget. And this is great for a number of reasons, especially for people using different font sets like Vietnamese or Cyrillic and so on. And we've left a link over here for you uh, where you can go to Google and grab your fonts. So let's just quickly go over this menu and see what it means. First you have the paste in the heading font link. We're gonna get this link from Google fonts as well as the font family link. Then we have the thickness and an option to make the text italic. We have these four options for our paragraph text as well. Then we have the text colors. So we can set the heading text color, the paragraph text color, and we can add a different color for our heading in the hover state. And finally, here is uh, where you choose the hover effect tint color. Right now, the tint color for normal state is set to black, but it's completely transparent. And in the hover state, we also have it black and we have the 50% transparency which can be set over here. It goes from 0 to 1. And if I go to the preview, you can see in the hover state we have a black tint appear over our portfolio thumbnails. While in the normal state it's just a regular image. Okay, so before we enter the fonts, let me show you how the portfolio block works. What I have here on my Muse page 
are four rectangles just the regular muse rectangles and you can see we've set them to responsive width and height this is how you create your thumbnails so you can literally just draw thumbnails and what you need to do is just set it to responsive width and height let me just delete this one and work with my already existing one and once we've set the responsive width and height we need to add a graphic style to our rectangle and through that graphic style we're gonna connect our thumbnail to our portfolio block so let's do that i'm gonna select this thumbnail here go to graphic styles and i'm gonna click create a new style from the attributes applied click on it double click and give it a unique name use only letters numbers and dashes over here and make the name unique so you could avoid any possible conflicts with graphic style names so let's say my thumb one and i'm gonna copy this and say okay now this thumbnail has that graphic style we're gonna head to our portfolio block and where it says thumbnail graphic style i will paste this new style over here and let's check out the general options for our thumbnails so we have the graphic style that's the most important uh, that's the most important part that links our portfolio block to our thumbnail then we have the image which you can upload over here we have the heading text the paragraph text and we have the alt text which is great for seo so let's add the image to our thumbnail i have some sample images over here i will keep this text over here and I will keep everything else as it was. So let's export now and see what we have. Now you see we've connected our first thumbnail and we have this cool effect. When you link the thumbnail, the cursor will change when you hover. And we have our hover effect, we have our heading text, our paragraph text, and everything works cool. If I resize, you can see it's fully responsive, both width and height. And the same procedure goes for any of the following thumbnails. You simply take this uh, fine portfolio block and duplicate it. I'm holding Alt key while dragging. That's kind of a shortcut for duplicating objects. And if we get in here, let's call this uh, thumbnail my thumbnail 2 and I'm going to apply the graphic style so I don't forget it my thumb 2 okay now we've linked this rectangle to our second portfolio block let's insert this second image I can write something else here and just say awesome over here and you can see you can't see this text as i said it's for the search engines now if we export we have our second image and it's as easy as that i've already set the responsive options for these these four elements over here th these four rectangles but you can set it to whatever you like just keep it responsive width and height and now you can see we already have some default fonts over here but the awesome thing is that now you can open the engine options the styling options and load any google font over here so to do that click where it says click here this will take you to google fonts which has a number of fonts you can use and that's a large large number so let's say I want to insert a Sensita font. What you need to do is click on the plus sign over here. It will say one family selected. When you click on this menu, you will get a customization and embedding menu. So let me teach you something about the fonts. You can click over here where it says customize and it will display all the styles of this particular font. So Sensita offers eight styles of the font. And look over here. Let, let's see what happens if I try to embed more styles. Now it's moderate. If I add more. Now our page will load slowly. And you only need a maximum of two styles. Because you only have a heading and a paragraph text. So let's say I want my headings to be extra bold. I'm gonna deselect everything else. And before I continue, let me just show you 
over here in the engine, you can have the same font for your headings and for your paragraphs. And if you do that, then you will simply have to put the same settings for both of these. But I'm going to show you how to use different fonts for headings and for paragraphs. So for our headings, we're going to use Sansita Extra Bold. When we've finished with our customization, as you can see uh, here, it also says in which languages it's supported. So some fonts have a multitude of languages over here, which you can choose from. And when we finished, click on embed. And what you need to do is where it says link, just take this where the URL starts and copy everything in between these two quotation marks. I'm going to copy this, go back in Muse, styling options, and where it says paste in the heading font link, I will paste this here and I will grab the font family as well. That's the second link. You only set this up once and it works on all of your portfolio thumbnails. And since we've selected extra bold, you could see that over here, see this number 800. That's what you need to match in your styling options over here. It's 800. And that's it. So let's preview what we've got. Now we have Sansita Extra Bold for our headings. It's that easy and works on all other thumbnails. Now let's set up the paragraph font. We're also going to go back to Google Fonts and click on Clear All. So you don't end up embedding two fonts at once. Now let's say for my paragraph text, I want to embed let's say railway, I'm going to click plus and open the customization options. And let's say we want it light italic. That's it. Here you also have the language options. And in the embed, we repeat what we did earlier, copy everything in between the quotation marks in the styling options. Let's paste that link for our paragraph font link. And also copy the font family. Here it is. And the number was 300, but since it was italic, we have the option make the paragraphs italic and we want to say yes. So let's preview. And now we have the Sansita extra bowl over here and we have the railway italic light. And that's how easy it is. And finally, you need to link your thumbnails to something. I've created a temporary page over here. This is like my portfolio item page. So I'm going here and I'm going to select these two and link them to my portfolio item. Of course, you would probably want to create a portfolio item page for each of your portfolio thumbnails. And if we export, oh, I need to export the site in browser. And if I click, it takes me to my portfolio page. That's it. So have fun using the fine portfolio thumbnails widget and let us know what you think. Bye.